somewhere in the Alps. So, Agent Gracefully, you're part of our spy exchange program from Canada? Try not to say my name too often. I'm trying to travel incognito. Actually, you're traveling in the Alps. What do you have there? I got something very important out of a smelly trash can. Well, of course it's smelly if you got it out of a trash can. You need a hobby. No, not smelly. Smelly! As in the society of meaningless evil larceny lying and yelling. Of course, our evil nemesis. Spy Fox, you've got to get this trash bag to Spy Corps headquarters. No, I've got a better idea. I'd better get this trash bag to Spy Corps headquarters. Oh, and take this gadget from Professor Quack. You may need it. What is it? Dehydrated skis. Inside of this little pill is a pair of skis. All you have to do is add water. And pray tell, why would I need a pair of skis? I came to get information, not recreation. You may need them to get away from those bad guys. Good luck, Spy Fox. Bad guys? Got water? to get out of here. Although this would be a nice getaway cottage, I've got to get this bag to Spy Corps headquarters. Got to get out of here and get this back. It's a bucket of water. Water, work your magic. The dehydrated skis are now rehydrated. Feet don't fail me now. Skis, I mean. Which way should I go? I wonder which way I should go. Here goes. Did you miss me, Chief? So you've analyzed the trash bag, I see. And what have you found? It's a model box 1-1000 scale for one evil robot. On the side, it says, Some Assembly Required. Sounds like an excellent title for one of my adventures. It has a mailing label that reads, To La Roche, Care of Chateau La Roche, World's Fair. Hmm. 
Inside the box are assembly instructions. You'd better take these with you, Spy Fox. Wow, you can learn a lot by reading. If Smelly is involved, they must be up to their usual no goodness. You'd best go check out this World's Fair. Monkey Penny and Quack have already set up the mobile command center. I'm on my way, Chief. Spy Fox, are you okay? Shaken but not stirred, Monkey Penny. So it looks like we're on to something big. Yes, I think Smelly is up to some monkey business, Monkey Penny. And it looks like it's up to you, me, and Professor Quack to get to the bottom of it. Well, you and me anyway, Monkey Penny. I brought the assembly instructions I got out of the Smelly trash bag. Well, of course it's Smelly if you got it out of a trash bag, Spy Fox. No, Monkey Penny, not Smelly. Smelly, as in the Society for Meaningless Evil Larceny, Lying, and Yelling. Our evil nemesis. Why don't you leave those assembly instructions here with me? Then you can refer to them whenever you're back here at the Mobile Command Center. And remember, you can contact me via your spy watch at any time. Don't forget to check out the spy vending machine, Spy Fox. It's full of new gadgets for you to try out. I'm sure you'll find some of them quite useful. Thanks. Now I need to go get busy and go give that LaRoche up a chateau, LaRoche, a visit and find out just what he's up to. Spy Heat. This looks like some hot work. How does this gadget work, Professor Quack? Now this gadget, I'm really proud of. You can spray it on something, say like a thermometer, and watch the temperature rise right before your eyes. Now that's a gadget that really rises to the occasion. You can say that again. All right. Now that's a gadget that really rises to the occasion. Hmm, light on the palette. Rough on the tummy. I bet these are cool. Spy skates, they look sharp, Professor Quack. How do they work? I've always loved the grace and beauty of figure skating. But being in the spy biz never left time for the years of training. So I created these. You simply slip them on and insert a diagram of the skate maneuver you want to perform, and voila! The skates, with you in them, perform it perfectly. Well, those could sure help to put the villains on ice. Ah, right, Spy Fox. I like these new blueberry-flavored blueprints. A spy key replicator can. What's the key to this gadget, Professor Quack? That's a one-shot camera, like no other in the world. It's specifically made for replicating keys. You take a picture of the key you want to replicate, then bake it in an oven. The picture shrinks down and hardens into an exact duplicate of the key you took the picture of. It can only hold one picture at a time, but you can take a picture over another picture. If you bake a picture into the wrong key, just insert the key back into the camera, and it will turn back into key film. I'm sorry, what did you say? Don't worry, it's a point-and-shoot, easy-bake gadget. It's a good thing I need my fiber. The termite grenade. I'm sure this gadget isn't bug-free, Professor Quack. How does it work? You've got to be careful with this one, Spy Fox. Toss it at something made of wood and get out of the way. It's good for one serious pulping. That's not something you want laying around the house. Not unless you're good friends with a carpenter. These blueprints are an acquired taste I haven't acquired yet. An alarm deactivator. What in the world could this gadget be used for? 
Well, it's used to turn off alarms. You attach one end to where the alarm signal is coming in, and then attach the other end to where the alarm signal is going out. The alarm signal is then redirected harmlessly into the alarm deactivator, keeping the alarm from going off. It just looks like a wire with two alligator clips on either end. Yes, it's beautiful in its simplicity, isn't it? I once printed these on exploding paper, but man, did those cause heartburn. The Fingerprint Replicator Utensil Kit. How does this work, Professor Quack? You'll eat this one up, Spy Fox. You place the fingerprint sending fork device on your target's plate. Then, when they pick it up to start eating, their fingerprint will show up on the fingerprint receiving spoon device. This is hands down one of your best spy gadgets yet, Professor Quack. I hope to follow it up with a matching salt and pepper shaker. Maybe if I mix these with a little goat's milk. Nah, let's not go there. The Stealth Vac. How does it work? You just hook up the handy nozzle, then press vacuum to suck up the particles into the handy travel bag. Or press reverse vac to blow the particles housed in the travel bag back out through the nozzle attachment. And it does it all in perfect silence. Ingenious, Professor Quack. I'd prefer those between two slices of bread, but when duty calls, Warm me up on how the sp That's the spy heat. Those are the spy skates. That's the Spy Key Replicator Can. That's the Termite Grenade. The assembly instructions for one evil dog bot made by Smelly Toy Division. <laughs> this is a rather cool looking device. What is it? One of those novelty gadgets that lets you see what you'll look like in 50 years? It's an ID maker. Of my own creation, of course. It's for making identification cards. Fascinating. How does it work? You place a photo in the photo slot, choose an occupation, and any name you like, then press the Process ID button. A completed ID will pop out of the machine. Professor, you're amazing. What if I made an ID, but then I change my mind and want to make a different one? Well, if you don't like the ID you created, you could make another card. Just reset the name and occupation. Insert a new photo, then press the Process ID button again. That sounds like fun. Creating false ID cards is something only secret agents can do. And then only when we're on a case. Right! Fair entrance.
Do you ever feel bored having the job of a service guard? Oh, I hardly ever get bored. It says Chateau La Roche service entrance. Hmm, the entrance is closed and it's locked up tighter than an impervious steel door. Excuse me, sir. What seems to be the problem? Well, I hate to be the bearer of bad tidings, but unfortunately, I cannot allow you to enter through the service entrance. I'm sorry, but I can only let waitresses with proper ID in today. See? It has the job title of waitress in a matching photo. I seem to have lost my ID. Can you let me in without one? I feel your pain, sir. Really, I do. Unfortunately... It seems that I'll have to find a way to get the proper ID. A free photo booth. Just one of the many joyous pleasures in life. Hmm? Taurus. Cashier. Clown. Ballerina, jockey, dishwasher, fisherman, wrestler, waitress, arena, France, dentist, nun, arena, France, dentist, nun, arena. France. I look ridiculous. Helicopter, Cashy, Journal, Ballerina, Band Leap, Waitress, it says Nancy, Muir, Carlton. To make an ID card, I first need to put a photograph. With the photo in place, I can now make a new ID card. Professor Quack's machine works perfectly. My identification card is complete. I expect that this will come in quite handy. Here you are, sir. One waitress ID card. Oh my, I'm so happy that you were able to find it. Let me guess, it was in your other pants, wasn't it? Why, yes it was. You must be psychic. If you'll excuse me, I'm late for work and they need me in the restaurant. Oh, I understand. I won't keep you any longer. I'll just keep your ID on file for you, Carlton. Keep up the good work. Have a spectacular day. And if I don't see you tomorrow... I need to get inside that Chateau Le... Perhaps you'd like to share one of the many high points of your career as a chef. Well, I once swallowed a whole container of yeast. I guess that's one way to get a rise out of the chef. Whenever I see a cool-looking oven like that, it just makes me want to bake something. Would you mind? First of all, ovens are not cool. They're hot and can be quite dangerous if used incorrectly. I'm afraid that only a fully trained chef can operate this oven. Stir, stir, stir. 
That's a good-looking oven. May I try it, please? Sorry? Only a trained chef can operate that oven, and I'm afraid you don't look anything like a chef. Someone's in the kitchen with dye now. <coughs> Napoleon LaRoche. I should have known you'd taken up with the likes of Smelly. So Spy Corps has sent the famous Spy Fox to try and stop my plans for world domination. World domination? Er, uh, of course. Ah! Since you are one of the few people who could possibly understand my genius, I will explain my entire plan to you in nauseating detail. You see, I reversed the scale on the Smelly Evil Dog Bot Assembly instructions. I've created a 1,000 to 1 scale, fully functioning evil dog bot. Just where do you think you can hide such a monstrosity? You silly spy. You're standing in it. Of course, you've disguised the evil dog bot as the centerpiece for the World's Fair. Complete with a revolving restaurant. One has to eat, no? Observe the means to my world domination. People buying tickets for the World's Fair do not realize that as they file through the turnstile, they are unwittingly winding the highly advanced clockwork mechanism within the evil dog bot. When the one millionth person has filed through, the dog bot, now wound to maximum capacity, will embark upon its horrifying rampage of destruction! <laughs> Once I have unleashed the dog bot, all the world's leaders will sit up and beg for mercy! It is unstoppable! It cannot be called off because it has no off switch! Yes! I have removed the off switch and hidden it somewhere in the world's fair! So cleverly, so subtly, that you will never find it! That's what you think, LaRoche! Even if you did find the off switch, you would still need the activation code to turn the switch off! And even if you had the off switch and the activation code, you could never hope to get past the diabolically clever security device located in the evil dog bot's Achilles heel, which is the only way into the dog bot's inner workings. It is hopeless, Monsieur Le Fox. There's no way you can beat me! <laughs> You'll never get away with this, LaRoche. Oh, I think I will. And now, Monsieur Le Spy Fox, adieu. <laughs> Judging by those monstrous metallic molars, I've been imprisoned in the dog bot's mouth. How humiliating. I must find a way out of this cell so I can stop that evil roach. If I could only reach that fire escape through these teeth. I can gather information about La Roach with this talk balloon. LaRoche's goons didn't follow the assembly instructions close enough. They seem to have left a few gears missing out of this contraption. I wonder where this gear goes. I bet this loose gear is supposed to go somewhere. This crazy gear mech- I think this gear mechanism is important. The gears in this cavity of the dog bot's tooth look like they may lead me to freedom. Unless LaRoche knows a good dog bot dentist. This mechanism won't work right without all the missing gears in place. This gear must- this gear is too big to go there. This gear is too big to go there. I bet this loose gear. This gear is too big to go there.
this gear is too big to go there. I wonder where this gear goes. That did the trick. Well, I guess it's like they say, the tooth shall set you free. Talk about escaping by the skin of your teeth. Now to stop La Roche and his evil plans for world domination. My spy watch is beeping. I'd better answer it. Please stand by. Spy Fox, Agent Walter Wireless has intercepted a microfish message from Dottie Dash. Where is it coming from? It sounds like it's coming from an exhibit called We World. We World, eh? Sounds silly. The message is staticky, and Walter Wireless needs to get closer to hear it. You can pick him up here at the Mobile Command Center. By the way, I've recorded Napoleon LaRoche's evil plans, and I'm sending them to you via the Spy Watch. I look forward to hearing the dish. Monkey Penny, out. That bad guy put on those glasses, breathed on that breath device, and the secret door opened. That must be the secret door La Roche mentioned that leads to the inner workings of the evil dogbot. I need to figure out how to get in there. These rose-tinted glasses might come in handy. I can't get in. I need to find out what I need to eat to get the right breath. Is this plant world? Correct, my dear. I am Madam Ladybug, the slightly irritated owner of Plant World. Instead of the beauteous red rose I ordered, I have been sent a mutant Venus flytrap by Napoleon LaRoche. Nice cage, though. A locked cage for which I have no combination. On top of it all, this particular Venus flytrap has something in its mouth. Interesting. It's the off switch. How diabolical of a roach to feed it to a mutant Venus flytrap. I've got to get it out of there and find a rose for the ladybug. No small feat. I can use this talk balloon to gather information about getting a rose for Madam Ladybug. 
what can you tell me about Napoleon the Roach? He delivered this mutant Venus flytrap to me instead of my rose. Now, why do you suppose he would do that? I imagine it is because of his evil nature. Do you know where I could get a rose? Look for a rosy smell and you will find one. How do I look for a smell? The ice skating rink smells of roses. Thanks. Ooh, a magnifying glass. Yes, I use it to get close up on the leaves and petals of all my lovely plants. I'd better answer my spy watch. Please stand by. Spy Fox, an informant has a hot tip about the off switch and is waiting for you at the Food of the Future exhibit. Ask for the candy apple. The candy apple. Got it, thanks. Monkey Penny signing off. Spy Fox out. Very strange weather we're having, eh? Everything is great when you have food on stick. Don't you think, sweetie? Yes, I suppose so. So that's my contact, eh? Brilliant disguise. I'd like a candied apple, please. Certainly, sir. Here at Food of the Future, all food is on sticks. It allows you to enjoy your favorite foods without using a knife or fork or having to stop what you're doing. Here you go, a free candied apple on a stick sample. Well, I have the candied apple. Isn't that just grand? Yes, but I, meaning me, have in my possession the candied apple. Only one candied apple sample per customer. Now run along and enjoy the fair, Pumpkin. Maybe she wants me to come back when there are less people around. Oh well, this candied apple looks good. Watch what you're doing. You want to give me a coronary? Ah, Lenny, you're the apple of my eye. What information do you have for me? Hi, Spy Fox. Listen close. There are spies everywhere, so don't look directly at me. This leaf contains the information that you need. This is too small to read. What do you want from me? I wrote it with my teeth. Now I got to split. People are starting to stare. Throw me in the dumpster. Suit yourself. Oh! I'm all right. Save yourself. Ooh, Rob Yucko. Lard! Lard on a stick. In four delicious flavors. Egg and bacon. Kiwi pork. Cream, corn, and cabbage. And lard flavored lard. Isn't there anything Yucko can't do? Uh, uh, wouldn't you like to know, Jimmy? Wouldn't you like to know? Lard on a stick. I can see a circle, a triangle, and a square on this leaf. Hmm, it's some kind of combination lock for this display cage. I did it!
I would really love to put a rose in that display cage. You object to the mutant Venus flytrap plant? Of course I do. They eat insects, you know. What can you tell me about Napoleon the Roach? All he talked about was the botanical exhibit he was about to see at Plant World. Probably because the plants are shorter than he is. Do you know where I could get a rose for the nice ladybug? I noticed a rosy smell near the ice skating rink. Thank you. Welcome to you clone it where you get two 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 for the price of one. Stereo sheep. I'm doll and I'm Lee. Hello, doll. So nice to have you back where you belong. Pardon me, can you give me any information about this Napoleon LaRoche? He's so mean. He makes medicine sick. Yes, I imagine he does. I need a rope. Well, we'd all like a rose in him. It's not for me. It's for a ladybug. Can't help you. Wait, I smell roses and there's no one there. You're just in love. Now, maybe it's the ice rink. It smells like roses. Thanks. It says food cloning. You clone it? You got it. Got one, one, one two, clone it. Something seems fishy. Cod, bear your soul. Oh, I'm sadder than an ant in the neck brace at a picnic. In the old days, it never failed. The Cape Cod would razzle and dazzle with his mighty cape of joy, and then the finale. A shot out of the cannon. Sounds exciting. Then, one fateful day, we were at a sea monkey convention, and my assistants Goldie and Blow were setting up my act. My lucky clear goggles were misplaced, and in their stead, was a pair of dark goggles. So what you're saying is that you need your lucky clear goggles? You ever try to steer yourself with dark goggles after you've been shot out of a cannon, son? Not lightly, no. Well, it's impossible to see the target. Hey, Cod, can I borrow those dark goggles? You can't borrow these until I get my lucky clear goggles back. Well, I need these for my act until then. What can you tell me about Napoleon LaRoche? He spends all of his time with his plants. He should be watching your act. He doesn't have proper audience etiquette. It says the amazing caped cod. What's this? It looks like a pair of binoculars. That breath analyzer is letting that bad guy type with the glasses on into the evil dog bot's Achilles heel. Hmm, I still can't see what breath is shown on screen. There's too much of a rose tint on that screen to see anything. Maybe I should contact Monkey Penny on the spy watch and see if she has any ideas how to stop the- 
Ah, these glasses really add a rosy glow to the whole fair. Groovy. I can see that goon breathing into the analyzer. Something's appearing on screen. It looks like onion delight. That breath analyzer is checking for the aroma of onion delight. I just need to eat some onion delight and breathe into that breath analyzer, and then I'll be able to get in that evil dog bot. I can use this talk balloon to gather information about the breath analyzer food onion delight. What do you know about Onion Delight? How can you even think of food at a time like this? Well, my brain receives information from the neurons, takes all the data, evaluates it, and either sends orders to my body or simply stores the information. I'm too depressed to eat. You might find those things at the Chateau La Roche. I thank you. Do you have any onion delight here? Nothing like that here. Only food on stick. You should try the Chateau La Roche restaurant. Try a restaurant, hmm? I like roses. I throw one only to skaters do a perfect triple greasy axle. I can gather information about the triple greasy axle ice skating move with this talk balloon. I'm not sure how to do the triple greasy axle. Maybe you should ask someone who used to ice skate professionally. I hear there's one working at the fair somewhere, but I'm not sure where. Thank you, that's very helpful. It's the 1974 Golden Melon Skates Trophy for best sneeze during a performance. Wouldn't you like to take a walk to stretch your legs? Yeah, but I have to stay here to keep an eye on the thermometer. If it goes over 80 degrees, I have to go phone the air conditioning repair guy. 80 degrees, hmm? Hey, you! You cannot go in! The Wax Museum is not open yet! Would you believe me if I told you that I had my own television show on public access called Entering the Wax Museum? Yes, but you may not go in. And don't stand in front of that thermometer. I have to keep a close eye on it. Did you know that you can rearrange the letters in souvenir and make the word sour vine? No, I never thought of that. Do you know where I can get Onion Delight? You might try the Chateau La Roche. They make all sorts of traditional dishes there. Do you know anything about La Roche? Well, he likes strange plant experiments quite a bit. 
That plant whirl exhibit makes him happier than a frog on a wet rock and roll star's shoulder. That's good to know. Do you know anything about triple greasy axles? I tried ice skating once, but I tripped on my neck. Had to go to one of those relaxation stations to get myself fixed up. Well, thanks anyway. Hold up there, sir. You have a stamp on your hand? No, I can't say that I do. I better stamp your hand so you can get back into the fair. There you are, sir. Have a nice day. Thank you. Go right in, Carlton. Can you prepare onion delight? Why, I won the French cooking medal of honor for my onion delight. Well, of course I can make it. Well, that is, I could make it. But I only have one onion right now. Can't you make it with the one onion you do have? Absolutely not. The good onion delight must be made with exactly two onions. Here, you can take this one, and if you can find another exactly like it, I'd be more than happy to make you some onion delight. Thanks, Chef. Two onions, eh? I'll get those for you on the double. Stir, stir, stir. Here's where my notes... What can you tell me about the triple greasy axle? I believe there is a former ice skating champion working here at the fair. Thanks anyway. Stir, stir, stir. <laughs> what do you know about Napoleon LaRoche? He's my boss, the one who owns this restaurant. I understand. Thanks for the info. Someone's in the kitchen with Tyna. Hello again, LaRoche. Say, can you tell me how to do a triple greasy axle? That is a silly question. Now go away. <laughs> Once again, I find myself a little down in the mouth, but hopefully not for very long. My escape route is still open. I have this onion. Don't come running to us with your trouble. I think he wants us to quote it, doll. Very well, Lee. You do the honors. No. After you, I insist. No, please. After you. I'll do it. Don't touch that. Isn't that amazing? Yes, but does it do julienne fries? You can always tell what a customer is not going to buy, Lee. You speak the truth, doll. What's the best part of this job? I don't know. I never give it much thought. Thinking hurts the brain, laddie. I think I understand. Hey, hands off those keys. Those keys are to all the exhibits at the fair. No one can touch them but me. The door is locked. It says two. 
It says We World. <laughs> Do you know how to perform a triple greasy axle? No. How many diving boards does it require? Never mind. Can you tell me anything about LaRoche? Well, he pays my salary. LaRoche is the owner of this restaurant. Interesting. Go right in, Carlton. That's not going to do me any good. Stir, stir, stir. Here you are, two big juicy onions. Wonderful! How exciting that you should find two so identical! They appear to be exactly alike! Perhaps they're related. The secret to gourmet cooking is careful mixing of only the finest ingredients. Hopefully we'll have the opportunity to try that one of these days. Voila! Oh, thank you! My breath should now be potent enough to get me past that electronic sniffer and into the secret workings of the giant robot dog. Come to the kitchen with Tyna. I'd better find a way to stop that evil dog bot from destroying the world's fair. If I don't, I lose all my spy vacation for a year, and I don't get a spy raid. What do you know about that? Onion Delight did the trick. Now I can come and go as I please. LaRoche's breath analyzer was no match for a clever international spy like me. I must be in the belly of LaRoche's evil beast. I should have a look around. enough to go to the turnstile. The turnstile. But other Dollar kids laughed at me. I thought that one day it would be I who would do the laughing. Ha <laughs> ha I am laughing. Ha <laughs> ha! See it is I who is laughing. Yes. Very soon the evil dog buck will be fully wound. And without the off switch there, there will be no way for anyone to stop me from crushing all the turnstiles and conquering the world! Huh? Hmm, the opening and closing of that door must be controlled by some sort of fingerprint recognition device. I wonder what would happen if...
A picture of La Roche. Hmm. I'll bet if I want to get into that room, I'll have to find a way to get a copy of La Roche's fingerprint. Roach must get his fly traps from this place. I don't want that welder to see me. I wonder if I can get that welder to stay at the conveyor belt longer so I can get those goggles. your belt go faster. I have the goggles. I'm blinded by the light. I need something to shield my eyes. I believe these are yours, Kate's card. My lucky goggles! I can't believe my eyes! Ugh, everything sure smells a lot different with these on. You mean, looks a lot different, don't you? No, smells a lot different. Where'd you find these? Sorry, they've been in my pocket for a while. Can I borrow your dark goggles, Cape Cod? Heck, son, you can have them. I don't need them anymore. Best not to use them for flying out of a cannon, though. Thanks, that's good to know.
what do you know about the ice skating move known as the triple greasy axle? I know nothing of skating. Have you asked the ex-skating champion, the masked she-bear? She's said to be working at the fair somewhere. Will she give me a demonstration? Perhaps, if you ask nicely. What do you know about the triple greasy axle ice skating move? You look tense. Let me give you a massage. I tell you, kiddo, I did the triple greasy axle as the math she bear. In fact, that skating move is fully illustrated in the latest edition of the bi-monthly magazine Skaters Weekly in a color diagram and everything. Color diagram? May I have that? It's all yours, sweetie. Thanks. Here's where I keep my... That won't do me any good. That's not going to do me any good. That won't do me any good. Hey, now I'm ready for some ice action. This should do the trick. I was so good, I burned the skates out. Oh well, I don't need them anymore. You did it, kid! I haven't seen a move like that since Sonia Henpeck! Thank you. What a perfect red rose. Madame, would this rose be suitable? Oh, thank you, sir. I'll just replace that atrocious flytrap with his beauteous rose. Nicely done. I can dispose of that flytrap for you. How polite. Obviously, you're a fox with home training. Yes, I am housebroken, thank you. UV rating 750. These should show me the light in a good way. The light is bright, but this spy is brighter. Wow. 
That's not going to do me any good. I've seen these Venus flytraps before. This must be some sort of grow room. I wonder what La Roche is up to. It's a room full of Venus flytraps. I wonder if they're related to the one I saw in Plant World. That looks just like the perfect place to set this mutant Venus flytrap. There must be a million flies in there. Those fly traps must really open wide when that jar opens to feed them. I've never seen so many flies before in my entire spy life. When that jar opens to feed those fly traps, they must really open wide. Here's where I keep my spy gadgets. That's not going to do me any good. Here's where I keep my spy gadget. That's not going to do me any good. That mutant Venus flytrap prefers to eat flies instead of off switches for giant evil dog box. I have the off switch. La Roche's evil scheme is crumbling. Look at them. The fools are unaware that by simply entering the fair, they are making possible my plans for world domination. As they enter the fair, they pass through a turnstile, which rotates a series of gears beneath the admissions gate. These gears, in turn, rotate a giant underground threat screw that passes below the fair to the base of my cleverly disguised giant robot dog. From there, Another series of gears turn, spinning the drive shaft, which turn, yet more gears that wind up the massive spring that will power my unstoppable, evil dog bot. When the one million tourists come through the turnstile, my evil dog bot will be completely wound. And then, I will unleash the dog bot on the unsuspecting world and conquer it in the name of Smelly! Ha ha ha! Holy Roach, that is a good one. My intellectual fox deductive-like reasoning tells me that the opening and closing of that door must be controlled by this fingerprint recognition device. Let me try again.
Nope, it's still not working. If I'm going to get in, I'm going to have to get a copy of LaRoche's fingerprint. It says, The World's Fair. Spy Fox, I've been waiting for you. Smelly is up to their usual bag of dirty tricks, I see. Walter Wireless, Spy Corps' top tracking buff. Good to be working with you again, Walt. Uh, you too, Spy Fox. The last time I ended up with a fever from being cat scratched. Right. Sorry about that. So, you picked up a microfish message from Dottie Dash. That's right, but all I could make out was something regarding an off-switch activation code before the signal went dead. I've got to find Dottie Dash, Spy Fox. This must be important. The signal was traced to an exhibit in the fair called Wee World. Wee World, eh? Sounds like your kind of place. Well, hop aboard, Walter, and I'll get you into this Wee World. I'm in there like swimwear. Ha! <laughs> That's my line. Tell me again how this alarm deactivator works, Professor Quack. You attach one end to where the alarm signal is coming in, and then attach the other end to where the alarm signal is going out. The alarm signal is then redirected harmlessly into the alarm deactivator, keeping the alarm from going off. That's right. Ingenious in its simplicity, Professor. The fingerprint replicator utensil kit. How does it work again, Professor Quack? You place the fingerprint sending fork. That's the fingerprint replicator utensil kit. Just watch this spy heat the join up with a demo of his spy heat. Excuse me, but the temperature has gone up well over 80 degrees. Oh no! I must call the air conditioning repair place! Oh dear, I'll be on hold for hours. That spy heat certainly was the hot ticket. Ah, St. Joan of Bark. She made sure that every child in the world had access to ice cream. She became the patron saint of cold cows. Thomas Elephant. Inventor of the mesh umbrella, light bulbs painted black, and shoes made out of bubble gum. Gum shoes. After playing in them all day, you could have a stinky snack. George Washington Cougar. An inventor who found 101 uses for gelatin. Gelatin sneakers, gelatin tires, and gelatin bricks. They don't last, but the inventions look cute when they wiggle. Bella a Buck, who worked hard for Roach's rights. She worked hard for better housing for roaches who wanted to escape those deadly hotels. Bella a Buck. Bert Barracuda. 
the successful songwriter who wrote such pop standards as Do You Know the Way to Swim Upstream? and my personal favorite, What's It All About Algae? Wolfgang Duck, an innovative chef known for his imaginative pairings of fresh local ingredients with his own version of what's tasty today. I like to cook, and I'm an imaginative fox. A chef outfit just might come in handy. That won't do me any good. What's the worst part of this job? The uniforms make me look like a security guard. But you are a security guard. Oh, yeah. That won't do me any good. Here's where my notes go. I use the talk balloons to gather information. Here's where I keep my spy gadgets. I sure hope that evil dog bot doesn't notice that hydrant anytime soon. I just took a shower. Go right in, Carlton. Oh, gracious me. Oh, my, oh, dear, oh, dear, oh. Excuse me, what's the matter? I don't have a single fork for Mr. LaRoche's dinner, and he gets so surly when he has to wait for his food. Well, you know the old saying, surly to bed and surly to rise. Ah, that's LaRoche's dinner? Yes, spit roasted boot bernays. Don't tell me. The sauce isn't. Oh, yes, it is. Ugh. I think I'm going to be sick. Now, where are all those forks? Here's where I keep my. Here you are. It so happens I carry a fork for just this kind of situation. A fork? I've been looking all over for one. I learned in boot camp it pays to have a fork at all times. I'm gonna get this spit roasted boot bernays out to Napoleon the Roach before he starts acting like a heel. It's only a matter of time now before I have La Roach's prince. <laughs> spit roasted boot bernays, my favorite dish. This boot was made for eating. And that's just what I'll do. Pretty soon that boot is going to be inside of you. There it is. Now I'm almost ready to give La Roche the boot. And I don't mean for dinner. A little tough, but still good. <laughs> Come to the kitchen with Dino. <laughs> Ahem. Oh, excuse me. I didn't see you come in, Chef Wolfgang. What a pleasant surprise. Well, I was in the neighborhood and I thought to myself, my, it has been a long time since I last prepared food inside a giant mechanical dock. Yes, well, of course, as a fellow master chef, you are welcome to make use of my kitchen. That's very generous of you. I believe I... But you may not use my wooden spoons. The purple ones, they are mine and I need them. Of course, how foolish of me. 
You know, of course, that too many master chefs spoil the broth. Chef Dinah, I can honestly say that compared to you, I am merely an imposter. Oh, Wolfgang. You are such a kidder. You are too kind, too kind. Is it all right if I use your oven? Certainly, bake away. Thanks. Come into the kitchen with I'll leave my chef outfit here, just in case I need it later. A fingerprint replicator utensil kit. How does it work again, Professor Quack? You place the fingerprint sending fork device on your target's plate. Then, when they pick it up to start eating, their fingerprint will show up on the fingerprint receiving spoon device. It's years ahead of most culinary technology out there today. Yes, well, bon appetit. How does the stealth vac work again, Professor Quack? You just hook up the handy nozzle, then press vacuum to suck up the part. How does the spy key replicator cam work again, Professor Quack? You take a picture of the key you want to replicate, then bake the picture of the key, which will shrink down and harden into an exact... How does this termite grenade work again, Professor Quack? You toss it at something made of wood and get out of the way. The termites will tear through wood. Let's give this a try, shall we? Like the old song says, a spoonful of LaRoche's fingerprint helps the steel door go down. Pineapple. 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 Orange. Apple. Grape. Cherry. Pineapple. That won't do me any good. Here's where my notes go. I use the talk balloons to gather information.
Here's where I keep my... I wonder which key I should take a picture of. Key two. Go right in, Carlton. <laughs> May I please use your oven? Sorry, only a trained chef can operate this. Amazing! The key goes into the oven full size and comes out tiny, much like my Aunt Ethel's meatloaf. Stir, stir, stir! Do you think you're going? That exhibit is closed. It's all right. I have a key. Oh, well. If you've got a key, then go right in. Ah, the right key. Excellent. See, I told you I had a key. go, Walter. You've got to find Dotty Dash, the microfish. You can count on me, Spy Fox. I am currently on the lookout for Dotty Dash and her microfish message. This car is my ticket to the dream house. This is the only way to travel. This is Walter Wireless reporting from WeWorld. This just in, design flaw discovered in Dreamhouse. What a shocking waste of valuable attic space. I've been told that it's impolite to stare, but in this case, I'll make an exception. Well now, things are starting to look up. The refrigerator is now in cold storage. This button opened that door. My instinct tells me I'm getting closer to Dotty Dash's location. This button opens and closes the bottom drawer. 
And the $74 million question is, who invented the retractable TV? I can open and close the top drawer with this button, but will it sort my socks? Close, but no banana. Typically, I would open and close the drawer by hand. Calm, cool thinking pays off. Film at 11. and around and down. This is Walter Wireless. Eureka. Astounding. There is a bathtub in the floor and it looks deep. No time to soak. I've got to find Dottie. That closed the floor over the tub. Walter, I'm glad you found me. I've been on surveillance here in WeWorld, searching the airwaves for anything suspicious. I intercepted a smelly message that has to do with some activation code. My equipment went on a fritz before I could get the whole message to you and Spy Corps, but I think it's really important. I'm sure it is, but if it was a radio message, how do you know it smelled bad? Not smelly. Smelly. The Society for Meaningless Evil Larceny Lying and Yelling. All right. Our evil nemesis. So what was the rest of the message? I need to transmit it to SpyFox right away. Of course. The activation code is pineapple, grape, orange. Got it. Walter Wireless calling SpyFox. Please stand by. Come in, SpyFox. I read you loud and clear, Walter. Did you find Dottie Dash? I did. I'm going to transmit the activation code Dottie intercepted to you via the SpyWatch. Stay tuned. Pineapple, grape, orange. I've got it, Walt. Good job, Dottie. Thanks, SpyFox. The rest is up to you now. Good luck, Spy Fox. This is Walter Wireless, signing off. I've got the off switch activation code. Now that LaRoche is in for it. Soon my diabolical plan will reach its fiendish fruition. I will be unstoppable. For who or what can possibly stand up to the onslaught of a big giant mechanical dog robot? My sophisticated machine of menace will march across the surface of the earth and claim it in my name. People will shout my name to the skies. Le Roach! Le Roach! Le Roach! And I will say, yes, what is it? All the world leaders will sit up and beg for mercy. It's quite an evil plan, no? <laughs> That's the alarm deactivated. That's the stealth back.
That must be the on switch for the evil dog bot. At last, the off switch is in its place and the activation code is set correctly. Finally, the one million customer has come to the turnstile. The dog bot is now fully operational. Let's hit it! I don't think this is a good sign. I hope La Roche has earthquake insurance. to the off switch. Bad dog bot. Sit. What? Spy box! You called? La Roche, your evil days are over. I don't think so. The sun has not yet set. should go in after it. That LaRoche won't get away from me. I wonder what he's up to now. That spy fox thinks he's so smart. I have one more trick to play before I make my escape through these sewer pipes. This computer program will set up a million toasters hidden in the dog box. Together, the toasters will simultaneously burn a million pieces of toast, leaving a dark gray cloud hanging over the fair for the next ten months. Much like Seattle. Oh no! There is a bug in the program! Ah! I must check my variables and track down all the stray pixels! That dastardly LaRoche won't get away with that. Not with Spy Fox on his trail. Interesting. When that lever is thrown, LaRoche's escape card will plummet down the trap. I'm sure that's part of LaRoche's escape plan. I'll need to change that plan. I bet that wrench could come in handy. I have to break through that glass to get it. Ouch! I have to find something other than my shoulder to break that glass with. I think that made the sewer pipe move. I wonder where that pipe goes. That pipe looks like it hasn't been used for ages. It says to Fiji. That's where La Roche is going to make his getaway. I need to redirect these pipes away from there. This sewer system connects to Spy Jam. La Roche, your days as an evil world conquering crazy are soon to be over. That pipe looks like it's connected to the pipe directly below La Roche's getaway cart. I think that made the pipe move.
This ball peen hammer looks interesting. It might come in handy. I've got it! There, that moved the sewer grate out of the way. The roach will see me if I try to go there from here. It's down the drain for you, LaRoche! What? You again! Uh-oh. Such a commendable job in catching Napoleon LaRoche, Spy Fox, you get my eternal gratitude. I had excellent help on this case, Chief. Ah, yes. I present to you the Grand Golden Family Approved Fortified Supreme Certificate of Excellence. Thanks, Chief. It was all in the line of duty. for the deductive reasoning and daring deeds displayed in disabling the dangerous and destructive evil dogbot, for saving the World's Fair from the total devastation, and for defeating the deceptively dastardly and decidedly deceitful villain Napoleon LaRoche, you are hereby awarded this certificate of accomplishment along with Spy Corps' highest honors and unyielding gratitude. Signed by the Spy Corps' chief and stamped with the Spy Corps' wax seal of excellence.
who's beyond reproach, gizmos and gadgets go.